Hello, and welcome to another episode of Brettcast Let's Read. You know how these fanfiction episodes work by now. I went to Wattpad, searched up Pokemon, and I looked over several results of fanfictions, and I picked one. The one that I picked for this episode is titled Pokemon Lemons. I'm just warning you, this is going to get weird. The actual story has a lot of sexual content that I will not be reading in the video. So, I'm going to keep it as PG-13 as possible. Chapter 1 is titled Delphox X Greninja. It is stated by the author that everything that happens in this fanfiction happens in a fictional town called Poketown, in which it is a town where there is no trainers, just Pokemon living like people. Third person POV. It was a cold Christmas Eve in Poketown. Greninja just went home drunk from a Christmas party. Del Fox, his girlfriend, was waiting for him at his apartment. Hey Greninja, she said to the drunk ninja frog. Hey babe, he said in a drunk tone. Babe, could you get the remote? It's in the bedroom. He said to the soft furred vixen. Fine, but did you drink all the wine from the Christmas party like last year? She asked him. Just get the TV remote and I'll tell you later, he commanded. So the vixen quickly got the remote from his room and to her surprise his phone was open. So she opened his messenger and to her surprise she found this. Before I continue, I want to point out a few things. So there's a very clear lack of periods in this story. I know you can't see it, but I can. They don't use periods anywhere. And my other quest, my question is that so far, I would like to know why is the TV remote in a separate location from where the TV actually is? That just seems kind of pointless. The only reason it happened here is so that Delphox would find Greninja's phone so that plot would happen. Just not. Hey Greninja, what are you planning tonight? Greninja. Oh, nothing. Just gonna ask Del Fox to babysit me tonight. Chestnut. What do you mean about her babysitting you? Greninja. Well, she did ask me once about when we will have fill in the blank with her. Chestnut. Oh, you scoundrel. Laugh emoji. Greninja. Laugh emoji. Hey, Del Fox. Where's the remote? He asked angrily. You're not gonna need a remote, she replied in a sa with a sassy tone. What do you mean about not needing a remote, he asked. Just come to your room, she commanded. Fine, I'm coming. To the ninja frog's surprise, his girlfriend wasn't wearing her soft robe. He saw her wearing an apron that said eggnog. The vixen asked, do you like it? In the sassiest tone Greninja ever heard. Like it? I love it, he said, and the next thing he knew, he blacked out. And I'm going to stop right there, cutting this paragraph off, because you don't need to know any of the details besides, and then they made it. There's also an extra part about Greninja and Delphox having two children named Telina and Brendan. Bren Brendan? Brendan. It's Brendan. I am very perplexed as to how there's an even mix of words that are capitalized that shouldn't be, and things that are not capitalized that should be, but the worst thing still is the lack of periods in this story. Chapter 2 is titled Umbreon x Sylveon. Third person POV. Sylveon was just a single Pokemon. She had no idea what ship, what was shipping and she had no experience of sex, while Umbreon was her opposite and he had sex with many Pokemon. And knows what shipping was, but the only thing they had in common was that they were single because every Pokemon he defeats is not his mate, but if he is defeated he might mate with the victor, but he is not going to go easy on easy to them. That was all one sentence I would like to point out. Also, Umbreon won't mate with the Pokemon that loses to him, but if he loses, 
he'll mate with the winner? That's... moving on. One day, Sylveon was going to buy food for her brothers, but Umbreon saw her and told his bodyguard to call her, but Sylveon noticed Umbreon. He was sitting in some kind of throne, and Sylveon thought he was so hot. Sylveon snapped out of it, and to her sight saw three pangoros standing in front of her, and she asked, What do you want from me? The pink-colored Pokemon asked. Our boss, Umbreon, wants to battle, one of them said. So he is your boss, eh? Well, let's see if he can defeat a fairy type. So, you're Umbreon, right? Sylveon asked the jet black Pokemon. Ooh, sass. I like it. Hurtier, my man. Raise the Colosseum. Daddy's gonna have fun with his new toy, he said in a sexy light tone. Sylveon started with Fairy Wind, and it was a critical hit and was super effective, especially since Sylveon had a high attack stat. So Umbreon was fainted. Sylveon won, so she has to go have sex with Umbreon. Okay, wait a minute. Earlier, it stated that if Umbreon loses, he might mate with the victor. Now it's saying that Sylveon has to mate with Umbreon. I mean, I could understand if Sylveon just wants to mate with Umbreon, but like, she's not being forced to. Either way, the next part of this is, and then they mated. So now I'm skipping to the last paragraph. Sylveon, I love you, he said. I wish I can be with you always, so... Will you, um, marry me? He asked Sylveon. Umbreon, I really would love to be your wife, and I really love you, but I don't know. Maybe we should start slowly and get to know each other first? She said. Sylveon, you are right. I shouldn't have pushed you too early. I'm sorry, he said. It okay, Umbri, she said in a sweet tone. Oh my, Arceus, I forgot the food for my brothers, she panicked. It's okay, I'll take care of it. Hurtier, my man, fetch me the biggest feast and send it to this fine lady's home. That ends chapter two. I have some questions here. Aside from the earlier stuff I said, first of all, why does... Why is it that when uh, Umbreon instructs Hurtion... Hurt... Hurtion. Oh my god. Hurtier. Why does it get said, raise the Colosseum? I don't get that at all. Also, I find it funny that after one battle, one very fun night, that Umbreon was just ready to marry Sylveon, even though neither of them know each other, and I'm glad that Sylveon actually made that point. Oh, okay, this was from earlier, but, um, when, when they meet each other at this fictional marketplace, right? Okay, so Sylveon says, so you're Umbreon, right? Says that to Umbreon, like asking, like, you're Umbreon, I assume. And then Umbreon's like, wow, that was sassy. It's like, she was just asking who you were. How was that sassy? Unless she did it like, so you're Umbreon? <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. But you know what I mean. And also, also when, when he says the whole, you know, daddy's going to have fun with his new toy, they, they worded it as, he said in a sexy-like tone. It's like, wouldn't it just be a sexy tone? Right? Anyways, let's move on. Chapter 3 is titled Reshram X Zekrom Part 1. Calming flute music. It was almost dawn in the Pogetown skies, and the two great dragon Pokemon were already training to get to the strongest Pokemon League, but after their really intense battle, they take one to two hour breaks. Hey, Zekrom, what's that you're eating? She asked the jet black dragon. Um, it's just my homemade rice puffs. You want to try one? He asked his vast white companion. Why, thank you, my dragon friend, Reshrim teased, acting like a princess, whose actions always brought a slight blush and some giggles. Reshrim always noticed his actions lately, and she thought he might be in love with her. 
So, Reshram asked Zekrom. Hey, um, Zekrom? She asked a little nervous. What is Resh? He replied, which made the dragon have confidence. Zekrom, for all these years we have been friends. I thought that we'll only be friends until now. It's hard to express feelings that I've chambered in my mind since we met. The truth is that I l She was cut off by Zekrom kissing her lips, so she kissed back. But Zekrom had different ideas. He guided Reshram to a small alley lo which looks familiar, and familiar it is. It was the old dragon breeding nest. And that's where I cut off this one. Because the nest, next part, like the past chapters, that's the part where they make. And I'm not reading that. There's a short bit where Reshram is telling Zekrom how she had dreams of being more than friends ever since they met, but then they go back to mating, basically. And I have a question. A lot of this chapter seems like there should be more context as to the relationship between Reshram and Zekrom. I mean, they go from just doing a bit of training to then they're just chilling, and then Reshram just confesses all her feelings and then they mate. And it seemed to happen very quickly and in a very short amount of time. That also is the end of chapter 3. Chapter 4 is titled Reshram X Zekrom Part 2, and this whole chapter is a continuation of And Then They Mated. So that's pretty much the end of this fanfiction. There was one more chapter about Gallade and Gardevoir, but they didn't actually finish it, so I don't feel the need to read it. I really only picked this one because it's short, and uh, I did actually know, obviously, about the sexual parts. I had no intentions of reading them, that's why I did not. If you want to read those, go read the story for yourself. One of, out of the three fanfictions I've read so far for this channel, um, this one has the most spelling, grammar, and overall sentence structure issues, or lack thereof sentence structure, because they don't use periods. This one definitely could use some work, and I'm going to do a revision, how I would revise the story, and then I'm going to read that in a separate video, um, and I'm still going to exclude all of the sexual parts. So with that, keep on writing and improving it. That's all I have to say, so if you're out of the conversation, leave a comment below. As always, thanks for listening, watching, and goodbye.